Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in Jeremiah's prophecy toward the very end of the 52 chapters. I'm in 51 right now, and especially in verse 11 of that particular passage. Now, in this, God brings or tells through Jeremiah, judgment is pronounced upon Babylon. At this particular juncture, he's not brought the judgment upon them, but he's going to. And I find it very interesting here that in verse 11, it says that that judgment is going to come because God was jealous for his temple, and it was the Babylonians that destroyed the temple. Now, what difference does that make to us today? Let me suggest that many times we feel like there's not justice in this world. Many times we feel like this world has uh, just been carried off by those who, who live lies, lives that are unjust and ungodly and are, uh, are against the people who are his. And that may be true. It certainly seems that way at times. It looks like at times that the unrighteous win, that, that the enemy and all of his demons win in the, in the long run. But the truth is that God watches these things. Excuse me, and he understands what you and I are going through. And he recognizes that people uh, that, that are faithful, who have prayed, who have, who have given themselves to the truth, are hurting because of the injustices that are in our world. But in Jeremiah 51, those injustices had come against the nation of Judah. Oh, they deserve judgment, to be sure. But that judgment was, in some ways, overwhelming because the people of that particular nation um, had, had failed to follow the truth, and, uh, and, and God just brought a, a, a judgment upon them through this ungodly nation of Babylon. And one of the parts of that was that these people became very, very um, uh, overzealous, and they actually destroyed the temple that God had assigned Solomon to build. And God didn't take that lightly. He didn't look upon that flippantly. He saw that as something that was quite serious. And so when Jeremiah is prophesying the end of Babylon, again, it's going to be 70 years hence, but when he's prophesying that, he tells us that the Medes are going to come in, which they did. And they were the ones that destroyed Babylon and conquered it. And when he says that, he said, I'm doing that because of what they did to my temple. Now, I want us to remember that there are times when it looks like the ungodly win. There are times when it seems like the forces of unrighteousness gain the upper hand and nobody is powerful enough to get rid of them. That's wrong. The Lord himself is still sovereign. He's still on the throne. He's still the one who is over all and in all and through all and every all is going to have to bow before him. Every one of us. There is a higher throne we sometimes sing in our church. And it's not, it's not a higher throne on this world. It's a higher throne in the heavenlies. And he has not abdicated his, his throneship his sovereignty, his rulership over this particular world. So I hope that encourages you. It's, it's still discouraging when we're in the midst of it. It's still discouraging when we want vindication. But the reality is that that vindication is going to come. Justice will be done finally. And that justice is going to be meted out upon all the ungodly of this world. Now, the good news for you and me who know Christ is that that judgment need not come against us. We recognize that we have an advocate, one who shows the nail prints 
and shows the spear in the side, someone who advocates for us so that we don't have to stand in that judgment if we have put our faith in the Messiah Jesus. But the truth is that all others will have to go, go up against that on their own merit. And there is none righteous, not one. And so we recognize again that there is injustice in our world, but we thank God that he has overcome it. Father, as we bow before you this morning, it is our prayer that you would keep our minds and hearts fixed upon you, even in the midst of this uh, very, very discouraging time. We recognize, Father, that in the world about us, there are threats against us, and it may be that these are the signs of your coming at the very end of time. And we would anticipate that. We would look forward to that. But we don't know that for sure. And so in the meantime, keep our hearts and minds fixed upon you and remind us that you're still enthroned and you sit in the heavens and scoff at all the nations that try to raise themselves up against you. So we, we bless you and we praise you and we commit ourselves to following you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hope you have a great day.